Well, Joshua Becker inspired my minimalism journey about five years ago. And so when Tom and I were on vacation this past week in Arizona, it was truly a privilege to get to sit down and visit with him and to get to ask him your questions as well. And so I'm really excited to share that interview with you coming up next. Well, hi, I'm Dawn from The Minimal Mom. If we haven't met before, I am married to Tom and we have four kids ages four through nine. And like I said, our minimalism journey was inspired about five years ago. And since then, our goal has just been to make family minimalism easier, practical, and cool. In the words of Tom, to not make it look weird. So that's our goal and that's what we do here on our channel. And it was a huge privilege to get to sit down and visit with Joshua Becker this past week. Some would call him the father of modern minimalism. Certainly he's made minimalism more accessible, more achievable, and more practical. And so for those of you who maybe haven't had a chance to meet him before, here's a little bit of his background. Blog at a website, becomingminimalist.com. Mm -hmm. I never started out minimalist, but was introduced to it, as you mentioned, ten and a half years ago by my neighbor, June, <laughs> who I really should probably be sending royalties to yeah, right. at some point. <laughs> um, I was, uh, it was a Saturday morning. I was living in Vermont. I was cleaning out my garage, um, ended a project that ended up taking hours and hours. Uh, my son was five years old, uh, kept asking me to come play with him. and. Um, just more and more I worked, the more frustrated I became. She's the one that first used the word minimalism to me. She said, you know, maybe you don't have to own so much stuff. My yeah. daughter's a minimalist. That's what she keeps telling me. And as I looked at the pile of things in my driveway and saw my five-year-old son playing alone in the backyard, like it just clicked that, that everything I owned wasn't making me happy, but even worse, it was taking me away from the things in life that do bring me happiness. So that was the, the beginning mm -hmm. of my journey. And thank you to everyone who submitted questions. There was too many to cover in one sitting, but I did try to pick out the most popular. So definitely one that kept coming up was, how long did it take you to simplify your house? Uh, yeah, I, I separate into three different time frames. Okay. Um, it was certainly not an overnight project mm -hmm. for us. Uh, it took us three months to go through what I call the, the lived-in areas. So living room, bedrooms, kitchens, bedrooms. So three months. Um, nine months then if you want to start counting garages and basements we had a shed in the backyard so three months lived in areas nine months for the whole house but then we moved three and a half years later into a smaller house okay. and got rid of even more things sure. during that move yeah. so somewhere between three months and three and a half years uh, that's I guess good because we... I would say it took us about a year to yeah. to really go through the layers in our house um, and so I think that's probably inspiring for a lot of people. And another question that comes up so often, and I think sometimes women might approach this differently than men, is through the process of you simplifying, did you offend any family members or friends? So many of us have so many people that give so generously into our lives. Unfortunately, it can get to be a lot, but we never want to hurt their feelings or offend them. Yeah. Um. I can't think of anyone that I offended. Is that rare? Did you? Yeah, I, I had offended? someone who did talk to me oh, for three months. Really? Because you got rid of something? Yeah. That they'd given you? And I mean, obviously we're making videos of like getting rid of toys and kids clothes and stuff. So it's, it yeah. was kind of a public process. Yeah. I can't think of anyone that told me that they okay. were offended mm -hmm. or upset with me. So no, I wish yeah. I wish I had an exciting story of someone yeah, right. who refused <laughs> to talk to me. I, I, I genuinely think that when uh, people understand like the whole explanation of, mm -hmm. of why you're doing what you're doing and why you're trying to own less, that yeah. they, they tend to understand and be agreeable. Um, maybe I have less unhealthy gift givers in my life. Like <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think that's that's not a reflection of you no. necessarily, no. right? No. I mean, if I give a gift to someone, I don't expect them to keep it if for life. they don't want it or need yeah. it anymore. I would want them to give it on, but not everyone's that way, I guess. And so did you find yourself having conversations, though, with family members explaining to them? How did you explain to them what this new lifestyle meant to you or how it worked for you? Well, so um, 
I think you have family that lives close to you, mm -hmm. if I recall. Um, I was in Vermont, and our family was all, my family was in South Dakota, okay. my wife's family was in Nebraska. Um, so we didn't live close by anyone sure. where they were like over watching they us get rid it. of certain things, but mm -hmm. we'd see them every six months, summer okay. or Christmas, um, and could certainly talk about what we were doing, but they yeah. weren't in our home Okay. necessarily seeing that the so thing they gave us easy. wasn't there. I guess, yeah. apparently, apparently it's a <laughs> unique situation. I will tell you this. I did have a family member stop talking to me for probably about three months. I've had a couple other family members maybe say some things that were less than kind. How'd they come? Did they all well, come Well, and that's what's so funny is what happens. Three months later, they're like, oh, hey, how's it going to act like nothing happened? Yeah. So it definitely wasn't a pleasant experience having a family member stop talking to me over something like this, but I do hope to encourage you that eventually they will come back around and ultimately you have to do what's best for your family. And I believe that you can't go wrong when it comes to simplifying your house and the benefits and the impact that it's gonna have on your family. Okay, so here's another experience we had. Our kids went over to a friend's house and they came back home and they were like, they have so many toys. Mm -hmm. Was there ever a time where your kids either maybe didn't wanna have friends over because they felt like they didn't have the same things mm -hmm. as their friends or they would go to a friend's house and be envious of the things they had? Well, certainly the second, for sure. Um, but, but I don't think that's necessarily just for people who are trying to be a minimalist family. Sure. And I, I think sure. I noticed that at a, it was at a birthday party, I think for my son, we were, um, what grade would they have been in? Second or third grade. Okay. And uh, I was carpooling all the boys out to laser tag or whatever we were doing. And in the back seat, there were two boys and they were arguing uh, one's father owned a BMW and the other ones owned a Corvette <laughs> and they were arguing. No, it wasn't even arguing. It was like envious that the other one okay. had a Corvette or the other, but the other father had a BMW. And so they were like yeah. envious of that. And <laughs> I just thought to myself, like, there's no, like, yeah. there is no end to this. And so mm -hmm. are my kids sometimes envious that other kids have other things or more things? Yes. But I think that's pretty typical to the right. child experience. Um, not necessarily just for my um, my family, but I think that by living a minimalist life, um, are setting them up to overcome that envy better, mm -hmm. uh, because you don't overcome that envy by buying them right. whatever it is that they yes. want, because there's always something else that they're going to need or something mm -hmm. that they're going to want. Um, so instead, you explain why we don't have as much stuff as as they do, and why we have a smaller house than they so do. So how do you explain and that? I always focus on the the reasons behind it like i focus on the bigger picture behind it well uh, we don't own as big a house as they do because we don't want to spend as much time cleaning and taking care of it and we want to spend more time uh, with you kids we save money on our mortgage so we're able to do more traveling as a family uh, we're able to give more to charity these are these are things that are more important to us yeah. than having a lot of stuff and i just I explain yeah. it. I'm, I'm a big over explainer when it comes yeah, to kids. No, I think good. I think you should be able to explain right. every decision that you make with kids. Um, even if they don't understand it right away, mm -hmm. um, I think you should be able to explain the reasons behind it. Absolutely. And I think I realized too when that, when that experience happened was they weren't necessarily saying we want so many toys. It, it was really an observation. My initial response was we've gone too far. We need to get more toys. But as I talked it out with them or it was like oh they were just noticing that their house is different than ours in that regard and so it wasn't even necessarily that yeah. they wanted more toys either so and don't they at least my kids they like they go through like they go through periods of it right sure. like yeah. like most of the time they're fine yep. but one day they'll come home from school and mm -hmm. or one day they'll come home from a friend's house and, and yep. make a comment but it usually it usually seems to pass pretty yeah. pretty quickly or else they're just not talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> so let's well let's keep talking about parenting. How has minimalism affected parenting teens and are they on board with it? Do you feel like it's something they'll continue into their adulthood? Yeah, who knows, or? right? Who yeah. knows? Um, my, uh, so when we, so I started 10 and a half years ago, my son was five and my daughter was two. Mm -hmm. uh, now my son is 16 and my daughter is 12. Oh. Um, so I certainly have a, a son in that 16 teenage range and I, I mean I think I think you will like mm -hmm. I, I think I've modeled this value and explained why it was important and um, showed the positive aspects of it but 
to me, it's no different than any other value that you right. want to pass on to your kids, yeah. right? You you model it and you teach it and you reinforce it. You you discipline if you need to, right? Like mm-hmm. like you just do your best with the time that yeah. they have, um, and they're gonna go off on their own and you say your prayers and cross your fingers and ultimately they're going to make their own decision. But Mm -hmm. that's the same frame. I want to be hardworking. I want to be justice minded. I want to be kind and selfless. I want to have faith in God. That's always been important to us. And maybe they'll choose it. Maybe they won't. But regardless of what they choose, I know that they can always come back to what they saw at sure. home, right? Like mm-hmm. they might wander off yeah, anywhere, but they yep. can always go back to, oh, now I see why this was important yeah. to dad, why this was important to mom, in any any value that right. you hope to That's good. Okay. And here's another question that's just kind of fun, is what's your family's favorite game to play? Um, board game, uh, we like Settlers of Catan. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, outdoor game, we're in a volleyball kick right now. Both, well, my daughter's 12, my son's 16, so we're e- most evenly matched when we play. Okay. <laughs> when we play volleyball. How about, do you have photo albums? And how do you manage photos? Um, yes, uh, we have, uh, my wife does the photo albums. She, um, is it Shutterfly, Shutterstock? Shutterfly? Uh, which, which Shutterfly, yeah. right, where you go in and you select the book and you yeah. upload your photos mm-hmm. and then they ship it to you. Yes, she does that. And it's great because they're like they're all the same size. Yeah. And so they fit in a small little <laughs> area, um, but can commemorate mm-hmm. trips that we took or baby's first year, our move from Vermont to Phoenix she did mm-hmm. a book about. Um, so that's how she's that's how she's that's done great. it. And yeah, it's that's great because yeah. yeah, it's pretty so helpful. So like your books kinda. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Other than that, uh, we don't have many physical, I don't think there's any box of physical photos anywhere. There's plenty of digital photos. Um, and I sort those by the ones I like best. That's how I usually tell people to do it. Um, yeah. I just five star the ones that I always like the best in like Photoshop elements. And then I can always go back and sort by five star and say like all my Okay, all my that's a good idea. Yeah. Okay, well there are more questions and we have more interview just was getting a little bit long So we split it into two videos. So coming up in the next video We're gonna talk about spouses and what to do if they have hobbies or different interests that cause them to keep lots of things Or if they see keeping stuff as being prepared for the future and the question that comes up very frequently What to do if we live with hoarders and so Joshua is gonna tackle those questions in the next video We're also gonna talk about his new book the minimalist home and give away a couple copies as well So you can find a link to that video here and down in the description below as well as links to Joshua's YouTube channel his blog becoming minimalist and how you can purchase the book for yourself so thank you for watching Tom and I would love to keep in touch so we hope that you subscribe we love sharing tips and tricks for simplifying your house quickly and we're actually working on a full home tour right now too that's gonna be released shortly so be sure to subscribe so that you're notified when those videos are released and we will look forward to visiting with you again really soon